Hello, and welcome to the first of many CPING protocols. This is a 96 well CTAB DNA extraction that can be used on either fresh material, silica dried fresh material, or herbarium tissue. Note that the protocol, the print protocol, is written for two 96 well plates, but it can be done on a single 96 well plate or two plus eight tube strips, just so long as the contents can be balanced in the plate centrifuge. In the video version of the protocol, we're doing it on a single 96 well plate. Part A, grinding and extracting with CTAB buffer. With a clean gloved hand, add two 5 32nd diameter stainless steel ball bearings to each 1.1 mil Neptune tube. Label the top and bottom tubes of each eight strip according to their position in the 96 well plate. For instance, the top of the first strip would be A1 and the bottom of the last strip would be H12. Note that if you're doing two plates, it's helpful to number the tubes of each plate with a different color ink. Add a small amount of tissue into the tubes. 10 to 15 milligrams is usually appropriate. Don't weigh every one, just weigh one as an example and eyeball the rest. However, strongly differing amounts of tissue will slow you down in later steps, so strive to add a consistent amount. Cap the tubes with the end tab up, in other words, in the A position. Label these end tabs 1 to 12. Place the tubes in a Neptune rack with holes drilled in the bottom, which will enable the liquid nitrogen and hot water to infiltrate the racks in later steps. Turn on the water bath and check that the water level is appropriate for the Neptune tube rack. The water should come up to the top of the rack itself, but not submerge the tubes. Prepare fresh C-tab isolation buffer by adding 0.2% beta mercaptoethanol to 2x stock CTAB buffer in a flask. You will need 400 microliters per sample, but calculate for extra volume, perhaps 125%, as you'll lose liquid during pipetting. Cover with parafilm and warm the CTAB beta mercaptoethanol mixture on a hot plate at its lowest setting. Be careful not to boil. Pour a small amount of liquid nitrogen into a shallow styrofoam cooler, just enough to barely submerge the Neptune rack but not the tubes themselves. Lower the Neptune rack tubes into the liquid nitrogen. When the cracking noise ceases, which is about 5 seconds, remove the rack and tubes carefully. Quickly place the Neptune rack and tubes into the clamp of the tissue disruptor and tighten as much as possible. It's critical not to have the lid of the Neptune rack inside the clamp. You need to have the clamp directly on the tube caps. If they're inside the lid itself, the tubes will move up and down under the lid and release powdered tissue. Note that we use a tissue disruptor modified from a reciprocating saw. This is from a 2007 paper by Alexander et al. However, commercial shakers are available and will work the same. Shake for one minute in total in 15 or 30 second bursts. Tissue should be completely powderized although clumps of tissue may remain for species with lots of trichomes. Flick the top of each H strip to knock excess powder down into the tube. Slowly remove strip caps onto a paper towel, being sure to note the orientation and taking care not to spread powdered tissue. Note that if you're treating with RNase, just before you add the CTAB buffer to the wells, add the appropriate amount of chiogen 100 mg per mil RNase. Note that this is 4 microliters per sample to the CTAB stirring in the flask. Pour the CTAB buffer into a plastic reservoir and add 400 microliter CTAB buffer to each sample with the 1200 microliter multi-channel pipette. This should be done on the open lab bench as powdered tissue could get drawn up by the suction of the fume hood. Carefully recap the tubes and vortex each 8 tube strip to mix the powdered tissue with the CTAB. Place a chem wipe along the top of each H strip during vortexing in order to capture any excess liquid that might be released. Try to get as much of the tissue in solution with the C-tab, but don't obsess about every little bit. At this point, one of your H strips will look like this. Place the Neptune rack and tubes into a 65 degree Celsius or 55 degree Celsius if using RNase water bath placing weights on the Neptune tube lids to prevent them from opening during incubation as the plastic warms. Incubate for one hour. Use this downtime to clean up glassware, wipe down bench tops, etc. and also to label new tubes for subsequent steps. 
turn off water bath, remove racks, keeping the weight on the lids, and allow the tubes to drain and cool for approximately 15 minutes. Part B, removal of proteins with chloroform isoamyl alcohol. Uncapped tubes. In a hood, add 400 microliters of chloroform isoamyl alcohol in a ratio of 24 to 1 with the 1200 microliter multi-channel pipette. Note that a convenient mix for chloroform isoamyl alcohol is 96 mL chloroform and 4 mL isoamyl alcohol. Note that you should pipette the chloroform isoamyl alcohol mix from a glass dish as this mixture may dissolve typical plastic reservoirs. Cap tube securely, add a paper towel to the inside of the lid, and invert 50 times to produce an emulsion. Transfer tubes to the designated spin racks. These are Neptune tubes that are in good condition, in other words, with no cracks or other damage, and these are used solely for centrifugation. Carefully balance the paired spin racks with a Harvard trip balance or scale. Centrifuge balanced racks for five minutes at 3,700 RPM in a plate centrifuge to separate the phases. At this point, one of your eight strip tubes will look like this. Remove the aqueous, which is the top phase, using a 1200 microliter multi-channel pipette and transfer to a set of clean, labeled Neptune tubes. Take note of the volume you're typically removing. Dump the remaining tissue, chloroform, isoamyl alcohol mix, and ball bearings into a labeled waste container. Removing the top phase can be difficult with a large multi-channel, but it can be done if you set the pipette volume for approximately 300 microliters angle the tubes, relax, and go slowly. Avoid the interface and especially the bottom chloroform layer. There may be some samples that differ greatly in the relative proportion of phases, and these can be difficult to manage. In these cases, use a 200 microliter single channel pipette to remove and transfer these problematic samples. Part C, precipitation, washing, and drying of DNA. Add an equal volume, in other words, equal to what you removed in the step before this, of cold isopropanol to the aqueous phase, after which you should see a white precipitate at the boundary. At this point, one of your H strips will look like this. Cap tube securely, add a paper towel to the inside of the lid, and gently invert the rack and tubes 10 times. At this point, one of your H strips will look like this. Precipitate at minus 20 degrees Celsius overnight. Transfer tubes to the designated spin racks and carefully balance the paired racks with a Harvard trip balance or scale. Centrifuge for 20 minutes at 3700 RPM. You'll now have white to brown to black pellets in most tubes. Uncapped tubes. Promptly pour off the isopropanol into a glass dish and then remove the excess isopropanol by dragging the H strip along a paper towel. Drag quickly and in a straight line to avoid cross-contaminating tubes with isopropanol from adjacent tubes. Note that if you wait too long after the centrifuge run ends, many of the pellets can detach from the tubes. This makes it difficult to pour, so be relatively prompt about this step. Wash pellets by adding 500 microliters 70% ethanol with a 1200 microliter multi-channel pipette. Cap the tubes and gently vortex each H strip until the pellets release from the tube. Place a chem wipe along the top of each H strip during vortexing in order to capture any excess ethanol that may be released. Note that some pellets may not release and this is okay. Transfer tubes to the designated spin racks and carefully balance the paired racks with a Harvard trip balancer scale. Centrifuge for 10 minutes at 3700 RPM to secure the pellet at the tube bottom. Pour off the ethanol as you did before. Place a chem wipe over the open racked tubes and air dry the pellets for 48 hours on a bench top or in a bench drawer. The ethanol is likely totally evaporated in far less time, but 48 hours doesn't overdry the pellet. Add 50 to 100 microliters 1XTE, depending on the final concentration that you require, with a 1200 microliter multi-channel pipette. Transfer tubes to the designated spin racks and carefully balance the paired racks with the Harvard trip balancer scale. Centrifuge the plates briefly, about five seconds with the pulse option, to pull all the TE to the bottom of the tubes. Incubate for one to two hours at 37 degrees Celsius, vortexing periodically, to assist with resuspension. Room temperature incubation will also work. Following resuspension, 
one of your H strips will look like this.